Every summer, Las Vegas plays host to an extraordinary gathering of characters. They've come to this neon outcrop at the edge of the desert to celebrate a shared passion. This is my first international ventriloquist convention. <laughs> oh, stop that. What are you doing? But I got sweets, ice cream, chocolates, and popcorn. Ah! Right here. All right, very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, hell. Just want to get out of this place. Ventriloquists have been holding an annual convention since the 70s, jetting in from around the world to discuss their craft and demonstrate their technique. This most unconventional of conventions is organized by Valentine Vox, director of the International Ventriloquists Association. This year, he's preparing to play host to around 350 ventriloquists and their best friends, their dummies. You're a dummy, Hugo. A common puppet. Not everyone attending the convention is an entertainer. In San Francisco, Bob Geary has found a more practical use for his talents. Bob is a 35-year veteran of the San Francisco Police Department. He's been assigned to this station forever. But within the last couple of years, he's kind of put together a partnership, and actually it's a partnership that, the, that had to be approved by the Board of Supervisors, i.e. the City Council in San Francisco, to um, take the puppet, or the dummy with him, Brandon O. Smarty. <laughs> Dwight Lee. One boy, 067. Fitz Wong, four boy, 248. Sir. Bob Gary, 42 Adam, community fair today with Brendan O'Smarty. Yes, sir. All right, very good. He does a lot of special stuff for the kids. Wish Upon the Star Foundation for children. Whenever people call and they want Brendan and Bob to, to appear just for a benefit from one reason or another, he's there. He's really good about that. And I think it's great public relations, too. At some point, you have to come up with ideas, other ideas, to bring into law enforcement, ideas that people haven't really thought of as yet. And Brendan is a, is a, is a new idea that's not really readily acceptable by a lot of departments. Got that right. Charlestown, Indiana. 16-year-old Carla Rhodes bides her time. Working in her father's candy store, she waits impatiently for her big break into show business. Until then, the store is her stage. Oh, I see you found the Spice Girls assortment. Do you guys like the Spice Girls? We like them. You really like them? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? You're not concealing any weapons in this little bag, are you? No, no. I think she's a unique personality. He means I'm a weirdo. If you were a man impersonating the Spice Girls, you could make a lot of money. But since you're a girl, if you impersonate him, you'll do okay, but not as well if you were a guy. I don't know where she got all this talk from. Can I be anorexic and beautiful, too? Yes, yeah. Wow, better start purging. That's all she does. Talk he thinks I'm a weirdo. Up. And I'm, I'm you know what? I mean, guy. he tells me to shut my mouth, and I do. Uh -huh. You're not going to be clinically depressed for weeks now, are you? No. No. So I drove myself so insane, so I ended up talk without talking without her mouth. This. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, you know. But she's a good girl. She works hard. He at, thinks. Uh, at things, and uh, I think someday she's going to be a star. In Las Vegas, Valentine Vox is backstage at his theater, preparing for the first of his twice daily shows. A veteran performer, he offers a unique insight into what makes a ventriloquist tick. It's probably true of a lot of ventriloquists. They are loners, just loners. That's, that's the thing to say. And, and maybe they, they create this other little personality. But I don't, you know, I don't think it's, uh, it's a schizophrenic thing. I think it's just it's a creative thing to me. You know? Look at this one here. She's got a wig on. No, no, no. That's not a wig of hair. It's set. Yeah, yeah. What time does it go off? All right, that's enough. The essence of ventriloquism to me is the creation of another personality, seemingly divorced from one's own, to be able to comically converse with that personality in such a way as to create the illusion of its independent existence. Want to do some impressions? You do one and I'll do one. A dog running by a window. <laughs> a dog running by a closed window. 
Thank you, I wrote that. This is the charm of the art. It's a comedy team that you've created yourself, between yourself, and you play against the character. You're always the straight man or the straight woman. You're always delivering the line. It's always the little character that gets the punchline and gets the funny line. So you think you aren't like any talk, Ron? Ha, 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 Ron, ha? I am making you talk. You think you aren't making me talk? I am making you talk. Then why the heck are you arguing with yourself? <laughs> well, like most of us here, I need the money for therapy. What are you gonna do next week, man? I don't know. What are you gonna do? Well, how are we gonna stop? How are you gonna go in and focus with the children? In the San Francisco Police Department handbook, it specifically states, and I quote, to use creative, ingenious methods for handling beat situations. You are right, bro. No okay, matter what you. they say about you. I decided to get a ventriloquist puppet, and I took him out on a beat with me, and uh, we became partners. What do you think of little Brendan, huh? How would you like to have him in school with you? Would it work out pretty good? You want to give him a high five? We have to think of new ideas of, let's say, making kids feel very good about cops while they're young so when they grow up there's a positive feeling about police officers every day is a different day a new day new excitement new horizons new challenges and uh i really enjoy it man you know what you made my day i'm glad you're here because i'm so sad why this is a sad neighborhood why is it a sad neighborhood I'm so tired to see youngster die. we had a new change of command here at central station and the new captain thought the puppet made the department look stupid and told me to get rid of the puppet oh that was <laughs> in order to get around not being able to have brendan osmarty as my partner what i did is i placed brendan on the uh, municipal election ballot in 1993 of november and it won the people uh, wanted us as partners and now we're partners today because of that Quite frankly, I'm looking forward to going to Las Vegas. I've never been there. Nine out of ten Americans prefer a knee to your average coke snorting teenager. You sit out there all alone. I spend 99.9% .9 of my time that I spend in this house in my room because it has everything I like. I spend all my time doing my things that I want to do. Me, me, I, I. Well, Carla <clears throat> has always been very intense in anything she's ever wanted to do. And she never does anything halfway. It's always <clears throat> all the way and always right now. Walk on by me. See. Testing one, two, three. Did you wash your hand before you put it in there? Can you imagine that I have to live in this nest? This is insane, yuck. I mean, I would have never done the girl. I mean, why does she like Mick Jagger? Oh, his wrinkles could kill, he'd be dead. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like that I'm on a leash and I'm running and I wish someone would let me go because I think I could take over the world or just destroy myself, either one. I mean, because I think I've got a, a lot of creativity to offer the world, and I want to use it, and I'm sick of wasting it. And I know I'm only 16, but it's, uh, you know, I mean, I don't care if I was, like, two years old. I mean, I think I have a lot to offer. It comes back to who's in charge. Is it Bob or is it Brendan? Stay right there. I'm getting excited. We're going to get there. Who's making that decision, Bob or Brendan? Who's driving the car? Is it Bob or is it Brendan? You have to look at it with a sense of humor. We'll drive by here. That's where you saw that suspect the other day in that uh, drug bust. I saw him? Yeah, remember you pointed him out to me? You said, oh, look at the guy selling candy. What we're doing now is to just to, to check the area out. They see the police car, kind of keeps uh, things uh, quiet. But I'd say about another couple of hours, everybody will be crawling out from underneath a rock or wherever they come from. I see up ahead, there's some, some sort of activity with a uh, black and white. Uh, he's got his red light on. He's interdicting some kind of crime up there and uh, hopefully we'll be able to go up there and check it out and maybe give him a backup. What do you have there? What do you got? 
Okay. This occurs all the time. But this person is just selling narcotics, and it's, it, could be, it could be just phony narcotics. And then if it's phony narcotics, the person that got burned may come back and try to knife the guy or even kill the guy. Do you fellas need any assistance or you have this pretty much under control? There's a chance that one of the guys who bought the rock and reach underneath the car, sometimes they stash it underneath. Okay. But and, so. Okay. Like the officer was saying, sometimes if they see an officer come up here and they know that they're, they're either, they discover that they're under surveillance or they're, uh, they think there's going to be an arrest, but they'll throw it anywhere they can. Welcome to the criminal justice system. Yes, I am accepted by teenagers. I am truth for children and I am recommended for more kitty winkies than cod liver oil and with the same result thank you Charlie horse no no that's all right Sherry I know how to answer smart remarks like that you do yeah how like this <laughs> okay come on you two let's sing what? I saw Sherry Lewis on TV. I, I actually had a crush on her in a way. I mean, I was mesmerized by her. I thought she was great. I love your hair. It's absolutely marvelous. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be a ventriloquist. She was in Baltimore, and my parents flew me out there to see her. And she was backstage, and I met her. And I started crying, and I couldn't speak. And it was so weird, because I was meeting my idol. So I just sort of went, can, can I have your autograph? Up and down the city road. The eagle, the eagle, that's the pub where the money goes. Pop goes a weasel, pop goes a weasel. We're in Jeffersonville, Indiana at um, Kai's, and it's some of my parents' friends are having a birthday party, and I'm just doing my little act here for him. Are you going to talk to me? If you're not, I'm going to leave. Good evening, Dale. Are you drunk yet? We all know about you. I mean, I'm only just stepping into the water of show business, but it, it's so tough. Happy birthday to you. I'm very excited about Las Vegas. I don't know how I'm gonna do, really, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm not that nervous yet, but I think once I get there, I don't know, I think I might be okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go, buddy. One. Two. Three. Come on, Paco. Three. Hold it up there, buddy. Three. Good, Paco. Yeah. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, little fella. Delegates from far and wide start to arrive at the Imperial Palace Hotel on the Strip, home to this year's convention. All of them, amateur and professional, young and old, believe it's a trip well worth making. Does she speak? Yeah, she does, but usually not this time of the day after a 14 hour plane flight. No. Have you seen this one yet? It's a new one. Take Visa, MasterCard. You take Mexican Express. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Digger the Dog. And I use Digger in my church with the children. I'm a child psychologist, and I use Elwood to talk with my patients about lots of different topics. We've got the wonderful, most wonderful message in the world to tell people. Ooh, Jesus loves them, right? We have a lot of fun. Yeah, we do, we do, we do, we do. There's puppets that are in the shape of a Bible, so if you wanted the children to learn some Bible verses. We might talk about divorce. And I can tell them, don't get caught in the middle after the divorce. No, 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 no. I have people say you're a pastor and you use your puppet in church. They have this idea that church is really boring. It sure is a misery. It makes it easier for the children to talk when they can talk through a puppet. And sometimes they're more comfortable talking to a puppet than they are to an adult. On January 3rd, sparks will fly and parts will be broken in an all-American gear. Go, 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 go. Though long established, this is only the second time the convention has been held in Las Vegas. I love it. I I'm just the center of attention. He's been with me longer than any member of my family, so. <laughs> 
we're kind of inseparable at some times. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. She doesn't let me speak my mind. George, I don't let you speak your mind because it's my mind. Yeah. Hey, cutie, what's, what's your mind? Let's get it all. Okay. I'm going to show you how I work, okay? Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. That was pretty wicked, George. I would like to show you how George Henry works. He has one, two, three, four controllers. The first one wiggles his eyebrows. The second one moves his eyes. The next one, this is his ugly face. If George doesn't like something, this is what you get. And then his mouth. And then the mouth movements, we can get both, or one, or the other. Free at last from the candy store, Carla arrives in town. Hey, here I am in Las Vegas, finally after the longest flight of my life. Her dad and stepmom have come along to watch her perform in the convention's youth show. It's a great chance to get noticed, and it's a chance she's determined to grasp with her one free hand. Okay, I'm missing an eyelash. This is what travel does to you. Quite in this, huh? Who looks worse, me or her? The origin of ventriloquism is to be found in the word itself. It's a Latin word, it means belly speaking, from ventra loqua. Thousands of years ago, there was a sect of necromantic diviner called ventriloquists. And what they would do is they would make the sound come from their, appear to come from their stomach. And they would claim that this was a departed spirit of the dead. And they would talk to these spirits, which were heard to answer them. And that was really the origin of ventriloquism. It began as a form of necromantic divining. If you were sitting in a darkened cave with incense wafting, and suddenly the necromancer says, Hello! Hello! Can you hear me? You see, it's very convincing. That's my spirit, you see, inside. Hello? 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 Where are you? Down here, turkey. In front of you. Ow. And what they were using, in fact, is what we call in the trade distant voice ventriloquism, when the voice appears to come from some distance. Hey! Do not shout. That's my neck. All right, all right. Can I touch you here? Do you know what that is? No, I don't want to know. That's okay. Um... Ventriloquism really began as street entertainment. They were street entertainers. They were like buskers, really. Hello? Hello? Testing. One, two, three, four. You ought to sing. Ha, 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 ha. It gradually moved into the theater. The first time it really came into its own was around about 1796, when Joseph Askins performed on the stage of Sadler's Wells Theater. And he was a one-legged performer. And so the press dubbed him the man with one leg and two voices. Now, when musical came in, ventriloquists then began to use a mouth-moving figure. And this started in, in the 1850s, and of course, it became the center point of the whole act. <laughs> I don't think that's very funny. You don't know. Well, then why did you make me say it? Oh, I see. <laughs> A lot of ventriloquists admire Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. He could act out so well with Charlie and manipulate him so well. It, 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 was just, it was just poetry to watch him. Uh, you're not so clever either, Mr. Bergen. Oh, I'm not. No. I can see your lips move. Oh, you <laughs> That burns him up, you know. <laughs> I'll hear about this when I get home. He was a great actor, and Charlie McCarthy became so real that you, you just forgot about Bergen altogether. The great Mr. Bergen. Oh, oh, oh. The ventriloquist, yeah. Why, you went out with the bustle. All right. <laughs> I can do that stuff myself. What are you doing down there, George? Oh, shoveling coal. <laughs> he created Charlie McCarthy, and he lived the part. Charlie had his own room, and uh, he had his own wardrobe, he had his own bed. Okay, Brendan, you're coming out. Okay, Brendan and I sometimes talk to one another. I wish you'd start doing this yourself. 
He lets me know how he feels, and it kind of puts me in the proper frame of mind. You know, the sign of a mature police officer is when he can dress himself, walk around, have his driver's license. If, if you have a, a puppet talking to you, it, yeah, let's face it, there's like a, a fourth world out there. <laughs> okay, my brother. Still upset. About what? Well, I was in the plane in that suitcase. When they're not performing at their first convention, the ever-friendly Bob and Brendan are keen to learn from the professionals. Ow! <laughs> hey, hey, you had got to trim your nails, sucker. You don't say, oh my gosh. It's an audience, that's right. You guys answered the ad. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. I started as a kid, and I just developed my own material without being around another ventriloquist. I was in my mid-twenties when I actually went to one of these ventriloquist conventions. Is that your husband? The guy on the leash? <laughs> they were all very much into wooden knee figures, and I had branched out and done soft puppetry. I'd built Muppet-like characters. I think your peers want to hear the toilet jokes, Ron. No, I don't think so. Anyone here got a cold or got a cure? Don't do this. All you got to do is drink two quarts of prune juice. It doesn't do anything sort of seether that it makes you think twice before you sneeze. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, that's great. Chap lits, chicken manure. Billy, just thread it on your lips. It doesn't do anything for the cracking that it makes you think twice before you lick on. Okay, that's enough. There's other ventriloquists here who are starting to say that, you know, well, it doesn't matter if your lips move or not. And I think it matters tremendously. I think you've got to have that down and then dismiss it, throw it away, mock it, have fun with it. Turn up the song. $25, dirty now, dirty dollar, dirty hula, again, a dirty nigga, dirty dirty on a dirty dollar, hula nigga, dirty now, hula did a dirty dollar bid. Woo! I'm trying for a theatrical bit. I'm trying to roller coaster people emotionally. Okay, all right. Okay, Charlie, chin back just a little. What do you think? I like this. This is good. Okay, all right, all right. I'm trying to make this much more of a theater piece than just a straight comedy piece. And that seems to be working. Do you have a song for Charlie to sing? Yeah. What? When you're smiling, that sucks. Good, he'll do that. Just, just kick it in. I don't care. I don't even know the words to the song. Oh, heck. When you're, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. I'll do it. Oh, good. Okay, Charlie, knock yourself out. You can move a little bit. Come on, come on. Use your hands. When you laugh, then, oh, when you're laughing, then, the sun comes shining through. But when you're crying, you bring on the rain, so stop your sighing. He's into it. The happy I 